During the Cretaceous, a species of reptile would take to the oceans and become some of the deadliest killers the world has ever seen. Even with this environment full of powerful fish and reptiles, the Mosasaurs have diversified into many different species, including those that stand at the top of the food chain. Amongst them is the massive Prognathodon. These colossal lizards can grow up to 13 meters long, their wide jaws housing thick conical teeth that can punch a hard armor as if it were rotted wood and cut flesh as if it were ash. They and other mosasaurs have spread across the globe and now in the late Cretaceous, they dominate. But even for such giants, prey doesn't exactly want to get eaten. Off the coast of what will be North America, one prognathodon is struggling to secure a meal. He is trying to bite into the hard shell of a giant turtle, Archelon. At four meters long and almost as wide, Archelon is the largest turtle ever to have lived. But even his impressive shell would struggle against the predator's bite force, so instead, he uses his ankles. The huge turtle keeps the flat of his shell facing the prognathodon's jaws at all times, giving him the widest target. So wide, in fact, the huge mosasaur can't fit his jaws around him. This is the same tactic modern sea turtles use on sharks. All the prognathodon's power is useless if he can't get a grip in the first place, and no matter how hard he tries to swim around the Archelon, the large turtle keeps swiveling his body to face his attacker. It takes 15 minutes of trying, but eventually the mosasaur gives up and swims away, leaving the tired turtle to swim in the opposite direction. Having failed his first hunt of the day, the prognathodon rests at the ocean's surface, taking deep breaths and sampling the water with his forked tongue, hoping to catch the scent of anything that might be an easy meal. His kind usually go after hard-shelled prey, like ammonites and shellfish. However, when you are at the top of the food chain, you also have to be opportunistic, and today he might be in luck. He picks up the faint smell of fish blood on the currents, and after taking one last breath, descends beneath the waves to find the source of the bloodshed. After following the dissipating trail, the huge lizard sees where it has come from, and who has been spilling it. A school of Zephactinus are finishing off a smaller school of fish. These vicious five-meter predators are common around much of the world. Their seemingly bottomless appetites and ravenous hunting of anything smaller than themselves makes even the prognathodon's hunger look tame. As they were feeding on the last of the smaller fish, they were distracted, and so the prognathodon swam deeper into the gloom, till he was right below the oblivious hunters. He then turned upwards and began to approach, slowly at first, but building up speed, as he got closer and closer. When the Xyphactinists finally noticed him, they scattered, but one wasn't fast enough, and as the prognathodon hit him from below, biting into him with his long dagger-like teeth, nearly shearing the fish in half, the prey struggled, but there was no escape, even when the prognathodon opened its jaws, the Xyphactinus couldn't move as the reptile's secret weapon held him in place. Inside the prognathodon's mouth was a second set of teeth in the upper jaws that helped secure prey and assist in swallowing. With the Xyphactinus not going anywhere, the prognathodon bit down again, causing even more deep puncture wounds. He then lifted his head out of the water, and with one great flick of his neck, tore the fish in two. The upper body was sent flying through the air before crashing back into the waves. The huge reptile swallowed the rear half of the Xyphactinus whole before swimming to the upper half and doing the same to it. There would be no scraps left behind from this kill. A satisfying meal, but not quite enough. So the prognathodon dove beneath the waves in search of his next meal in hopes of quelling his mighty hunger. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down one of the most deadly carnivores of the Cretaceous, Prognathodon. Prognathodon was first discovered in 1889 in Belgium, 
with additional finds being found in other parts of Europe, the Middle East, North America, and New Zealand. A lot of these remains are fragmentary, however, so many of these fossils have since been recognised as other species or assigned their own species. The genus of Prognathodon contains ten species, with some still not properly identified. They belong to the Mosasaur family, a group closely related to modern snakes and lizards. They grew to many different sizes, from the smallest, Solvali, getting to six metres long, to the largest, Saturator, potentially getting up to 13 metres long. The genus's most distinctive traits are their large and heavily reinforced skulls and teeth. Their skulls were attached to powerful muscles that, along with the deeply rooted teeth, gave Prognathodon an incredibly powerful bite force, even amongst mosasaurs. The teeth were robust and conical, with blunt serrated carinae and smooth enamel. This, along with the powerful bite force, means that they were designed to penetrate hard armour and puncture the flesh beneath. Their dentition is quite specialised for mosasaurs, who are usually more broad-feeding apex predators with cutting teeth, as opposed to crushing teeth. Stomach contents from one fossilised individual showed that it had the remains of a turtle and ammonites in its gut, but it also had a large fish. So while they were definitely armed to go after hard-shelled prey, it didn't mean that they couldn't go after other sources. Like their relatives, they were opportunistic hunters that would take anything they could catch. Why they adapted such specific tools could be for a few reasons. It may be niche partitioning, focusing more on tougher prey so they don't compete as much with other predators. It could also be that prey like ammonites were so abundant that they evolved to exploit them, or that other large prey items began to reduce in number, necessitating a shift towards hard-bodied prey. In addition, Prognathodon had bony rings around its eyes. This may have helped the eyes against high pressures of deep diving, so Prognathodon may have been going deeper into the ocean than other marine reptiles to take advantage of a food source others couldn't. The rest of the body was typical of a mosasaur, with a long snake-like body with four fins used for steering, and a long tail for propulsion. The type of tail was not known until the discovery of a fossil that preserved the outline of the tail's tissue. It showed that they did indeed have a fluke-like tail, seen in whales and ichthyosaurs, but it wasn't symmetrical. Instead, it looked a lot like an inverted shark's tail, with most of the length facing down. However, larger species would have had a slightly more even tail fluke to accommodate for their increased weight. One prognathodon specimen from the Netherlands was found to have multiple wounds on its skull, including a serious partial amputation of the premaxilla that were likely caused by another mosasaur biting into it. The injuries actually show signs of regrowth and infection, but also that the prognathodon had a more mammalian method of fighting infection, such as producing liquid pus, as opposed to modern reptiles where solid fibrous masses are produced to contain infections. This is one of the few cases where immune responses were studied in detail on a fossil, while also showing an extinct species greatly differed to its extant relatives. The larger members of this genus would have been among the top predators of their time, and clearly their more specialised jaws and teeth didn't contain them to just being a hard body shell crushers. They fed on just about anything, and no doubt would have spread fear throughout the shallow and deep waters they patrolled. But what do you think of Prognathodon? How do you think mosasaurs in general would fare in today's oceans? And let me know what lesser known extinct creature you'd like me to do a breakdown on next. And until then, please like, share, and thank you for watching.